Hi, I'm David. I'm Stacey. And we're from Leeds, England, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. like we got everything in order. I called the customer. I'm gonna be there like right at the end of the day. So uh, hopefully they'll unload me today yet. If not, they'll have to do it in the morning. But he says there's a good chance they'll be able to unload me because they are there later. It's just that their receiving hours are technically over at 4 p.m. But since it's just a load of lumber, it only takes five minutes to unload it. So he said he, they're doing other things after 4 p.m. but they could probably work me in and get me unloaded anyways. But I should talk to him later and see how busy they are. All right then, off we go. Uh, 464 kilometers to our destination. Karen here is telling me that we're gonna arrive there at about 3.40 p.m. That doesn't account for traffic or anything. And I don't know if I trust Karen yet, cause uh, I mean, we're a new couple. So, you know, trust is earned. It's not given. We'll see what she says. Mandy over there doesn't even tell me what time she thinks we're gonna arrive. I know she has that option, but gotta press a bunch of buttons to get to it. I don't know how she works. She's old school. Let's see if we can get ourselves onto the highway here without hitting anything. Got my coffee, got a little bit of breakfast. I got a banana and some matzo sticks. Not the best breakfast, but hey, I got a banana. You know what's interesting about Karen over here? I don't know if you can see it or not, but she is telling me exactly where every Walmart is. <laughs> oh, they come in love. She says right on the map there, where every single Walmart is around me. I didn't even ask her to do that. She just knew what I wanted to see. She just knew I loved Walmart. I think this is gonna be a good relationship. We're in Minneapolis right now, going around uh, the west side, going down to the south side, and then going to head down towards, I believe it's I-90. And that's gonna take us into Sparta, Wisconsin. It looks like I should be able to make it and get unloaded today, so that's good. Then we can get into Milwaukee area and get loaded first thing tomorrow morning. Then I can head on home. Just making our way through Black River Falls, Wisconsin. We're very close to our delivery. It would have been nice if we could have made it all the way here last night. But that didn't happen, so it is what it is. Just getting over the river here. Oh, I remember this. I went for a walk down here once. In 200 meters, turn right on South Roosevelt Road, US 12. That's right, me and Diesel went for a walk through here. Uh, was it last summer or the summer before? I remember that bridge. I know it was off camera, but just to your left is a huge, like, uh, I'm guessing it's a hydroelectric dam or something. So we can get ourselves onto this road here. Looks like we'll be okay. Everybody left me enough room. Thank you very much. Never actually. On this road for 42 kilometers. Okay, Karen. Thanks. I've never actually driven through here with the truck before. I usually stop at the Flying J, which is just sort of on the outskirts of town. It's that time again. Time for a bath. So I moved Karen down there. I like her a lot better there, actually. Not in the way. I moved Mandy, so. 300 meters, make a U-turn if possible. Karen. Now I have to explain to you that that was one of the things that me and Mandy didn't get along with. She kept interrupting me. I'm gonna start off on the right foot. So my satellite radio usually goes here, right? But I was telling you about my radio that uh, I need to get that code, right? Before I can use that again. Satellite radio's there. This here, it actually doesn't take up any space. Like I'm sitting here, 
and it doesn't block my view of that mirror there. I can still see that mirror there. I can still see this mirror here. It's resting on the dash, so I don't have to worry about it falling down and breaking. It doesn't rattle around, it's solid in there. I think it works good. But it's time to get all of this dirt and bugs off here. What do you think, Diesel? Time for a bath? I love baths, me bubble baths, your best baths. I know. I know, you love bubble baths. We're at the Blue Beacon here in Portage, Wisconsin. Looks like that guy's moving in there. We got one, two, three in front of us yet. Oh yeah, and I haven't showed you yet. The trailer behind us there. Empty. No more lumber, so we're on our way to uh, Milwaukee. It's actually Oak Creek, Wisconsin. I've had to wait 37 minutes, so not too long. I'm behind this guy now, next in line. <coughs> Looks like they're doing his full unit truck and trailer. I'm just going to be doing the truck. It's not my trailer, so... They want me to wash it. They can uh, send me a PO number. <laughs> so the washes here at the Blue Beacon, I usually just do the classic wash. It's a regular truck wash, uh, the Ray Rain-X, and uh, engine cleaner. Just They open the hood and they wash down the engine. I like everything to stay clean under the hood. I don't like it getting all full of dirt and whatever else you know sometimes you open up the engine of a or open up the hood of a vehicle and it's just dirty under there I like to keep the engine looking clean uh, I don't usually do an in-frame wash it costs a little bit more I usually do that myself on my way home I'll stop at a truck wash and just wash out the inside of my frame so that that doesn't rust and here they do a really good job usually of just getting everything else cleaned off it costs about 80 bucks Something like that. Uh, could get up close to between, I'd say between 80 to to $100 Canadian for just the truck wash here and the motor wash. But uh, it's usually between, what, 65 to 70, $75 American, depending on everything you want. And they got all kinds of different options. This guy's getting his trailer done and everything, so he's going to be a little while. Something I just thought of. This is uh, Karen's first truck wash. Don't be afraid, Karen. I know it took Diesel a while to get used to these truck washes. They used to freak them out like crazy. But uh, Susan here, I don't know if her name's Susan. She's never told me her name before. I don't know. Maybe we'll just call her Susan. I have an Aunt Susan. That's kind of weird. Maybe I should think of a different name. I don't know. But Karen, it's going to be her first truck wash. What do you guys think I should call my e-log? She has a voice too. You want to hear it? You want to hear it? Watch. You have four hours and 30 minutes of remaining drive time. It's kind of soothing, right? What do you think, Diesel? Don't, no name? No name? Ideas? Oh, we'll think about it. See how Karen puts up with her first, uh, first truck wash. She might have been through the truck wash with her past owner. I don't know. She's been with other men before, so we'll see. She should be pretty experienced. Is that a dude with a man bun on top of that load there? Isn't there some kind of law against that? Are you going to jump right from there, Mr. Man Bun? You're going to do it, aren't you? Do it. Do it. Here he goes. Here he goes. Give her. Oh, he's going to, like, rappel down. That was actually pretty smooth. Pretty smooth, Mr. Man Bun. So for this wash, I got the classic wash. Uh, here, I'll just pull up here and I'll uh, give you guys the rundown. I don't know where my hat went again. I keep losing my hat. Huh. One second, I can't go over this until I get my head. Is that guy telling me to move? No, he's telling the guy behind me to pull in. He just flashlight's flashing in my mirror. Where's my hat? Where's my hat at? Okay, here we go. Now we can talk business. All right. Okay, so this is the Blue Beacon in Portage, Wisconsin. I got the conventional classic wash, which was $47, all in U.S. prices. Uh, I got the engine wash. There's $10. Undercarriage rinse, which was $650. And the Rain-X Complete Tractor, which was 
came out to after tax $77.02. Convert that to Canadian in today's exchange rate for when I got this done, uh, just under $103. Adds up quickly, doesn't it? Okay, so let's throw this in here because I am going to claim that on my taxes. Get some money back from Uncle Sam. I'm going to take. All right, so let's go find a parking spot and uh, go inside. I'm going to grab another coffee, and then we're going to roll on down the road. It's getting into evening though, so I'm <laughs> I'm hoping I didn't just do something bad, you know? Because uh, the bugs aren't too bad down here. They're worse up on the prairies where I'm from. I hope that I don't get completely destroyed by bugs tonight. I don't want to sleep here. I, I'm still like two hours away from where I need to be, right? So I want to keep going. But I didn't want to stop tomorrow and get a truck wash because tomorrow I'm not going to have as much time. I'm going to be in a bit of a rush. Turn I've got... Right. Whoa, Karen, calm down. I've got to... Uh... Oh, Karen, you made me lose my track of thought. Got two pickups tomorrow, and after that I'm going to be booking it home because I want to go home, right? I don't want to stop and wash the truck. I already stop on the way home usually at the wand wash, like I said, to like uh, just on the way home once I drop the trailer off. Uh, and that's just to uh, wash the inside of the frame. Because even if you pay these guys to do it, they're not going to do as good of a job as I'm going to do. And that's not me tooting my own horn, I'm just saying these guys, they're in a rush. And I just trust myself with that a little bit more. But they do a good job on everything else. Like everything they did today, they did a really good job on. Sometimes you gotta watch them though, because sometimes Blue Beacon they'll they'll rush through it if they got a long lineup. They'll, they'll try to rush you, rush you out. Keep an eye on it. Make sure that they get everything and mention it to them if they didn't. Like here, they did mention, they did almost miss some stuff on my windshield. I got them to take care of it. They didn't do the best job on the windshield. Like, uh, ah. Down there, I don't know if you can see it, there's still some gunk there. Up in that side in the corner, I can see as it's drying now, there's still some gunk there. Ah, but whatever. Better job than I would have done myself. Look at this truck driver coming up behind me. Bright LED fog lamps on. Where's the fog? I don't see the fog. Why are your fog lamps on? You think it makes it you, you think it makes your truck look cool? It doesn't. It doesn't. Guarantee you go look at the side packaging of that, but it doesn't say DOT approved. I'm glad you can see cuz no one else can. Why? Why? They're called fog lamps to help you in the fog. You don't need them in traffic. We're, we're entering Milwaukee here. You don't need your fog lamps in the city. Come on, man. You don't need them on the highways at all. It bothers me. Because honestly, what does it help? Does it really help that much? That much that you need to blind everyone else? Or... Because if you can't see that well, maybe you shouldn't be driving a truck at night. Uh, it's my own personal thoughts, my own personal opinions, you know? Karen agrees, right, Karen? Better agree, Karen. Look at that little death trap right there beside me. Look at this thing. Can you imagine if I hit that guy? There'd be nothing left of him. He's not even wearing a helmet. Look at that thing. Dude, that space wasn't for you. Space was for this little guy. Look at him. He's going to come in front of me. I want him to go in front of me so you can see him. Look at this guy. Yeah, no problem, buddy. Look at this little go-kart. Three-wheel go-kart. <laughs> I've seen them in Canada, too. This one just looks a little fancier than the ones I've seen before. Like... Look at him. No helmet, nothing. I bet you that thing's a lot of fun, though. It looks really weird, though. Is that rear wheel steering on that thing? No, it's front wheel steering. What a weird little bit. And then there's another car. This Prius wants to get in here yet too. 
I already let two people in. And another guy, there's like three people you do want to get in here. I'm not gonna let all of you in here. Everybody always wants to get in front of the truck, right? I think I didn't even have a signal on. If you put your signal on, I'll make room for you. Oh, he wants to ask this guy. <laughs> I wanted to talk to that guy. There's only one lane open up ahead. Mail hockey. So I do have a little bit of bugs on my windshield again, but that's okay. It's not nearly as bad as it was, and the truck still looks nice and clean from what I can see in the mirrors here. What do you want, Karen? Karen dings at me a lot. Every time she wants me to do something, she's just... That's okay. It's all right. See, it's okay. I like it. It means she likes me. She wants to develop a relationship with me. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Karen, why didn't you tell me there was a sharp corner coming? All right, so uh, we're going right to the customer. They said that we can sleep right there. So that's cool. Apparently there's a couple restaurants around there if I want to get breakfast in the morning. Or... They're going to be there at 7 a.m., so it's probably before the restaurant's even open. But uh, it'll make it really easy for us. Then I can get up at about 6.30, get myself awake and ready and uh, be ready for them at seven, get unloaded. Maybe I'll even be out of there by like eight. And on my way home. I can't make it home from here in one day, but I can definitely get to uh, St. Paul. On this road for six kilometers. And then uh, I'll be home the next day. So tomorrow is, what? what's tomorrow? Wednesday? Wednesday. So I'll be home Thursday. We're gonna find a parking spot here. I don't like it when they do these diagonal spots because the spots on the left I'd have to blindside back in. Doesn't look like there's any spaces available. Oh, wait, there is one there. Nope, there's a bomb tail in there. Okay. Hi, I'm Levi from from United Kingdom, and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV.